Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, NASA and SpaceX complete a final major flight test. A New Jersey township plans to close airport. And Airbus EV told Bahana program comes to an end. Welcome, I'm Sophie Herlock. On Sunday, NASA and SpaceX completed a launch escape demonstration of the company's Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 rocket. This was the final major flight test of the spacecraft before it begins carrying astronauts to the International Space Station under NASA's commercial crew program. The launch escape test began at 10.30 a.m. with liftoff from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A. As part of the test, SpaceX configured Crew Dragon to trigger a launch escape about a minute and a half after liftoff. All major functions were executed, including separation, engine firings, parachute deployment, and landing. Crew Dragon splashed down just off the Florida coast at 10.38 a.m. Teams of personnel from SpaceX and the U.S. Air Force will recover the spacecraft for return to SpaceX facilities in Florida and begin the recovery effort of the Falcon 9. Prior to the flight test, teams completed launch day procedures for the first crewed flight test. The joint teams now will begin the full data reviews that need to be completed prior to NASA astronauts flying to the system during SpaceX's Demo 2 mission. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. Hybrid Air Vehicles has revealed the production Airlander 10 as the company approaches the start of production with negotiations continuing with commercial customers. The updated aircraft has a lower drag shape, enhanced landing gear, and a larger cabin for passenger cargo. These features will provide the flexibility needed to deliver the unique experiences the commercial market is keen to offer to its customers. The Rhode Island National Guard Open House Air Show has been pushed back to Father's Day weekend so the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds demonstration team can perform at the event. However, due to the date change, the Raptor demonstration team will no longer be on the program. A full list of updated performers will be announced at a later date. Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio is partnering with PSA Airlines to develop an aviation training center at Dayton International Airport. The program would take over an unused hangar at the airport and turn it into a training facility with enough room to run engines and work on aircraft. The plan also calls for a classroom space. Renovation of the hangar is expected to cost $300,000. Sierra Nevada Corporation expects to make its first flight with a Dream Chaser space plane to the International Space Station in 2021. Dream Chaser, which was originally designed to be a manned ship, was selected by NASA in 2016 for six unmanned cargo missions to the station by 2024. SNC said construction of the first Dream Chaser will be completed this year in anticipation of its first launch. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you.
Mission Township in Sussex County, New Jersey, plans to close Trinka Airport on September 1st and will consider options for redeveloping the site. The airport, which the township paid $2.28 million for 18 years ago, consists of a single grass runway. The airfield is used by flight schools to teach soft field takeoffs and landings. It's also popular with pilots of antique aircraft who prefer to operate from grass than pavement. There are no fees for pilots to use the field, but the township has an annual cost of about $15,000 to maintain the airport and pay a part-time airport manager. Local officials are concerned about the cost of improvements at the airport required by the FAA and Department of Homeland Security. Discussion about closing the airport began after an accident in 2018 killed the pilot of an amateur-built airplane. Nearly four years after the Vahana concept was sketched on a napkin, the flagship program that launched the Urban Air Mobility Initiative at Airbus has come to a close. Vahana's key learnings are now providing Airbus urban mobility with invaluable insight on the design of its future urban air vehicle. Back in 2016, no one could have predicted that leveraging the sky to improve urban mobility was practical, and yet urban air mobility is no longer the stuff of science fiction. Today, it's one of the most exciting and promising markets in aerospace, and the extraordinary progress of Bahana has undoubtedly played a key role in bringing this vision closer to reality. The final page of Bahana's story was written at the Pendleton UAS range in Oregon, where Bahana took its final test flight. Now that the Bahana program has been completed. The project team is looking forward to applying the lessons learned to the future urban air vehicle at Airbus. For the time being, one of the two Bahana Alpha aircraft will head to A-cubed to act as inspiration for future groundbreaking projects. The other will make an appearance at the 2020 HAI Heli Expo in Anaheim, California. And that wraps up our show for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more aviation aerospace news any time of the day, head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you tomorrow.